In this video, I'll be going over the Welsh's t-test. Now, the Welsh's t-test is there to help with analyzing the difference of means with the assumption that each of the groups there have different variances, or they're not exactly, they can't be assumed to be the same. Uh, that's what separates this from an unpaired or independent t-test. So we're going to go with a, a fairly simple problem here. I've done a lot of the calculations for you just so we can get into the method itself because some of the calculations do look a little intimidating. Uh, the hypothesis is going to be the null hypothesis mu1 equals mu2 and the alternative is mu1 does not equal mu2. So I've already gone ahead and done the difference between the average of the males and the average of the females and we get 12.9. So these are exactly the same numbers I use for the unpaired t-test or independent t-test because I want you to be able to see the difference here. The formula for the calculated t is the average of group 1 minus the average of group 2 over the square root of the standard deviation squared of the first group divided by the size of the first group plus the standard deviation squared of the second group over the second group's sample size. When you put the numbers in there, you get 12.9 over the square root of 4.2 squared over 15 plus 3.1 squared over 17. Simplifying it, you have 12.9 over the square root of 1.176 plus 0.565. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you this uh, in this step is really to focus on the left and the right side of the denominator in the square root. The 1.16 is associated with... Uh, the first standard error calculation, and the 0 0.565 is associated with the second standard error. And this yields a t value of 9.78. So I have this information here just so you have it as we're going through the next step. The next thing is to calculate the degrees of freedom. This is the equation for the degrees of freedom. That looks like a nightmare, but remember earlier I told you to remember what the numbers were for the uh, the standard errors. The standard errors are in here twice. So you have it once here and then you have it once here. And so since you know what the standard error is for both of them, and it's a simple calculation with the uh, sample size, you get 1.176 plus 0 0.565, all of that squared divided by 1.176 over 14 plus 0 0.565 over 16. And so this simplifies that calculation really fast. So you don't have to go about putting this in your calculator in the most extended way possible. And so to simplify, you get 3.032 over 0 0.084 plus 0 0.035, which gives you 25.409. And so then once you have the degrees of freedom in the decimal, you, you just round it. And so because it's less than half, we round down to 25. And just like before, we have the information here uh, with the degrees of freedom. And that's important because we're going right into checking the t-table for the 95% critical value. And so we know that it's going to be a two-sided test because of the hypothesis and that we're looking for degrees of freedom of 25. From the table, we get a 2.060 for the critical value, which means that given the calculated t of 9.78 being greater than 2.060 as the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis that the sample means are equal. Now, I do want to just emphasize a few things when it comes to the differences between the unpaired t-test and the Welsh's t-test. In this case, Welsh's typically has a lower degrees of freedom. So in this case, we have 25. Using the same numbers in the unpaired, you can see that we got a degrees of freedom of 30. So if you ever want to validate between the Welsh's and independent, you know, use the same numbers. If the degrees of freedom is less than for the Welsh's, you probably did it right. If the Welsh's is higher, you probably did it wrong. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, I regularly respond pretty fast. Thank you for watching, and stay nerdy, my friends.